Meditations for Healing and Restoration on today's episode of Obleron Spirituality. <music> Greetings, soul family. I am Obleron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me today where we are going to talk about how to heal and restore our body through energy work. Now, if you don't know how to open up your chakras yet, be sure to check out my video, Visualization to Master Manifestation, and there you'll learn the basics of meditation, breathing, and how to alter our brain waves into producing a trance-like and meditative state. Okay, so in this meditation, it is purely a psychic meditation, which means that you do not need any components, you don't need any materials, no crystals or herbs to be able to, to perform this healing technique. The only thing you need for this is a quiet space. Much of the most powerful and transformative magic that we have all starts with our intentions and it all starts within our brain and also our hearts. So imagine now that your chakras are opened up and you you are at the point where you are ready to start the healing process within your body. Okay, so there's primarily two ways which we can draw upon healing energy. The first way is to drop the power from the earth into our lower chakras. Another way that, that you can also think of it is in terms of alchemy, the lower chakras can represent the element of sulfur. They can also represent cold energy and in some cases, uh, divine feminine. Although generally speaking, the sort of cold energy and divine feminine have been kind of going their separate ways recently. When we drop the powers of the earth for a healing purpose, a lot of times you can visualize, let's say, a white light, a shining white light, or perhaps a mint green sort of light. Choose a way that that is most comfortable for you. Over time, you'll start to develop your own practice and you'll start to, to find what works and what's easier to, to manifest and to visualize for yourself. Okay, so your chakras are opened, you're in a state of meditative breathing, and you are ready to draw upon the healing powers of the earth. So imagine an energy coming up from the earth. Imagine an aura of sort of either white light or maybe a mint green aura, which is coming up through the floor and it is entering your feet. And as it's entering into your feet, you notice a sort of tingling sensation, kind of like, let's say, Tiger Balm or Icy Hot or one of those types of uh, sports rubs. And it's entering into your feet, tingling, and then you notice after the tingling ceases that your foot is in a state of, of relaxation. And you notice this as the entire energy is starting to go in past your feet into your ankles, it goes up through your calves, and all throughout the rest of your body. And as it travels up through your body, you continually notice how it tingles first, and then the tingle goes away, and then there's relaxation. Every part where the light envelops your body, there is this relaxation, almost like like you're about to go to sleep, but you're still very much awake. It's, it's a state of, let's say, if you are suspended in warm water, um, if, if you're in a jacuzzi or, or something like that. You notice it filling up your lower three chakras. It starts off with your root, and then it goes into your sacral, and then it goes into your solar plexus. And you notice a similar sensation with your chakras as you did with your body, in that as the energy enters into your chakras, you get a tingling sensation, and then it starts to relax. So that energy is filling up all of those chakras. It's filling up, it's filling up your body with every breath that you take, and it goes into your heart chakra and then fills up your upper chakras as well. Uh, your throat, your third eye, and then your crown. All of with the same sort of healing warmth, the tingling sensation, and everything is starting to relax even more. A second way is to bring down the light of the celestials. In alchemical terms, it's related to the element of mercury and it can also be related in certain respects to the divine masculine. And again, just as 
the divine feminine is sort of separating from cold energy, divine masculine is also sort of separating from hot energy. It works in a very similar way, except in starting from the bottom up, you're starting from the top down. So imagine this light coming down like, almost like an aura to surround you on all 360 degrees. And it's almost like there's a spotlight on you. You know, you're, you're on stage and the spotlight's on you and you can't see anything else around you. So there is this light that is coming down and it's illuminating you. It's going in through your crown chakra. And again, you, you notice a, a type of warm, tingling sensation, except this time it starts off with your crown chakra. Then that light starts to go into your third eye you notice the same thing, and then you go in through the rest of your chakras, all the way down into your root chakra. You can also use both of these healing spells as a light protection spell. When you drop the power from the earth, imagine that you are surrounded in an aura of that healing light. And then now imagine it begins to sink into the body and just under your layer of skin is that healing light that is still there. And it can be used for several different reasons. You can use it as a barrier when you know you, you, you feel negative energy coming towards you. If, if some sorts of disturb your aura, well it doesn't hit your aura first per se, it hits the aura that you summoned. So again, it's not touching your direct aura physically, it's just letting you know that something is coming your way. I find that's, a, that's an excellent way to protect yourself without having to, to use your own energy. Another way too is, as we pull down the celestial light, it's a very similar effect where Imagine bathing in the light that's coming down and you are surrounded in that shimmery celestial light. Now imagine that light is beginning to wrap around your skin and forming a layer of protection. And again, just like with, with the shield pulled from the earth, the celestial shield will also protect you. Now they have different, again, like I said, different types of modalities. If they heal with different modalities, they will also protect with different modalities as well. I tend to associate the lower three chakras with the shield that is pulled up from the earth, and I tend to associate the upper three chakras with the shield that is pulled from the celestials. A lot of times it's a, it's a good idea to, to actually use both if, if you have the time for it, because they have slightly different modalities in the way that they approach healing your body. Both methods have, have their strengths and weaknesses, although both methods can be used to heal the, the body in its entirety without one or the other. Drawing the power Power up from the earth is very helpful in healing the lower three chakras while drawing the celestial power from the sky is better to heal the upper three chakras. When it comes to the heart chakra, which is right in the center, I find that it is better just to call on the most high for that. The heart is always connected directly to the spirit. You'll notice perhaps maybe certain chakras or perhaps certain parts of your body will respond better to one treatment as opposed to another. Um, you may notice you may notice that, that, that you don't need to drop the power from the earth as much because you feel very comfortable with the celestial um, healing or vice versa. Again, it really doesn't matter which which one you choose and the reality is that there's many modalities of healing. There's many different ways to approach this. But generally speaking, it's a good idea to learn how to heal yourself, not just the healing in in the in a physical sense, but also in learning how to purify your energies as well. In fact, I I find these these healing exercises to be a lot more potent when the focus of the healing exercise is to focus on the energetic level and then let it translate into the physical level. What we can manifest in the spirit and what we can manifest uh, just beyond the physical, it helps to easily pave the pathways for that physical manifestation to follow. Okay, so thank you for joining me on today's episode. If you like what you're hearing or if you resonate with today's episode, then leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. 
Thanks again for watching. Much love and blessings. I love you all, and now we shall close with the chant of Obleron. Aum Dei Sote, Aum Dei Obleron, Aum Dei Sote, Aum Dei Obleron.